minutes, you're going to go ahead and start seeing the yeast go ahead and get real bubbly. It's going to go ahead and start activating, and it's going to go ahead and start rising to the top. You'll start seeing a lot of the bubbles starting to come to the top. That yeast is starting to react. Something nice and firm. So that way when I do go ahead and cut into it, I can get those nice slices. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure you have thin slices for a margarita pizza. You don't want to, and if you have big chunks, it's not going to cook all the way through and it's just going to taste like you sliced tomatoes on top of the pizza. Make the pizza dough very really good. This is one of the ones I prefer. Uh, so cherry tomatoes. So you're going to see like a little right. And it's not... All right, so we're just going to add little by little. Normally, you know, it looks like about a cup here. We're going to start with like, a, you know, about a quarter cup at a time. Not How did you eat it? I'm just going to pour it in slowly. So we want to make sure all of it, because if it rises, we want to make sure everything that it touches is coated in oil so that way it doesn't stick. You can probably keep that one better all, all the time. All right, we're just going to go ahead and form it into a ball. So you're going to see it's really, really sticky. Yeah. But you notice that it does go ahead and lift off away. Nice and airtight. Go ahead and press it down. Makes it a little easier to get down into. Oh. With the finger right. The as it, after I'm done, I kind of push it off. So the knife's already on the board, so I'm not worried about anything cutting myself. But you'll see the firm tomato really helps to go ahead and make sure that I can keep on going as opposed to. And you see, I do like a saw motion. I kind of make sure it goes through. There's a lot of ingredients going on here, right? little semolina flour. Just put enough on the bottom so that way when we're stretching it out, I'm going to go ahead and just form these back into a circle. But you can see that it's still kind of sticking to me, so I'm just kind of rolling it around in the semolina flour. And then if you do come up, so normally what I like to do, so again, we're going to be doing this all by hand. So just make sure you have a lot of flour on here just to go ahead and make sure it's not going to stick. So I like to use the palm of my hand. I have bigger hands, so if you feel like you have small hands, just go ahead and use both to go ahead and do it. But just, I'm just pressing down, making that first initial circle. We'll go ahead and flip it over, kind of do the same thing to the other side. It's going to look like, oh, it keeps going out, 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 and then all of a sudden it starts to shrink back in. So we want to make sure you're really trying to stretch it out as much as you can. Don't be afraid. So when I was in restaurants, I would tell people, you know, try this technique where you're just kind of pulling it. So I'm holding it with one hand and I'm pulling it with the other, but I'm constantly rotating it at the same time. So it takes a little technique, but if you want to keep practicing it, I'm just kind of pulling it with, I'm holding it with my left, pulling it with my right, but rotating at the same time every time. So you want it to be here, the, the sides are still being pretty thick, so that's going to be your crust. That's where you're, so once you get that initial part right there, you'll see like bubbles starting to pop over here. But that's all we're trying to do is just kind of hold it, pull, hold and pull, hold, pull, and turn. So you don't have to go as fast as I'm going right now, but just kind of like, you know, slowly start looking at your crust, making sure that there's not too much there. Here you have your crust already kind of built. Now what we want to do is just kind of make two fists, put the dough right over the top, shake off any extra blow in the car, right? You're just kind of like turning the wheel. But I'm just kind of pulling the crust so that it's not so thick. It's like a rag, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, the, the dough's going to be very elastic, so don't be afraid. If it pops a hole, fold it back over. You're not going to have to worry. You're not going to be like, oh man, no, I already messed it up. Now I have to start over. No, just throw it all, all back into the ball and then just stretch it out again. We can go a little bit for, further with it too. You'll just want to watch because you'll see some areas right here where it's real thin. So just be careful with those areas because that's where it's going to go ahead and tear if you keep working it. So kind of work on your areas that you can still see a lot of dough and that's where you're going to go ahead and notice that it, I just kind of shake it, let it kind of stretch itself out. Nice round circle. Right. You can use a rolling pin as well. The only thing with the rolling pin I, I feel is you don't get the crust because you're evenly rolling out everything to the exact same diameter. So with this, you're going to go ahead and get everything. You're going to have that nice fluff over here. 
That way when you go ahead and throw it on, you're gonna notice that rises and then this, it's nice and thin so it cooks really fast and it stays crisp. Because if you have too much dough in here, that's when you're gonna notice that it's real doughy and then it starts kind of leaning when you go ahead and cook it off. Last thing we wanna do is just make sure that we push all the air out of it so that way we don't have those, pop, those bubbles that pop up. So just kind of tap it down with your fingers. Just kind of work the dough. Just pop out up any of That does, you see how much it stretches it out. Yeah. So again, I'm not really worried about it breaking because everything should be even. But so you when put I'm it doing, down, it shrinks it, right? Right. So I mean, the bigger the bigger you can get it without the holes, that's what you're looking for. And then all I'm doing right here is just kind of pulling it on the edges where my crust is. So then when I get it on here, yeah, it looks like it was huge, right? And yeah. Then it kind of starts shrinking down. Meal. So we're just going to go ahead and put this on top of the, the board here. You don't want to put too much because if a lot of it falls off into there, you're worried about that burning off and then you get that smell, but it's something you want to make sure to clean off that stone pretty good. And then we're just going to go ahead and grab this. Don't be afraid. You'll see I already have like a couple little holes in there. Right, so we're going to go ahead and put that on here. And then if you want to get even more fancy, you want to make the, the dough like look like a little design, you can go ahead and crimp it. And what that does is it pushes a lot of air out of the crust as well. You hear those pops. Alright, next thing we're going to go ahead and do, pizza sauce. You don't want to overload pizza sauce. I know everybody <laughs> wants that extra sauce here. But just enough just to coat. The further to the edges that you can get, because the, again, the crust is going to rise. So it's going to go ahead and push everything back to the middle. So if you only have it, let's say I only went that far and I left all that, you're going to have a big crust and you're not going to have a lot of room for everything else to go ahead and spread on there. So again, just enough to go ahead and coat the bottom. Too much sauce is going to go ahead and give you that extra weight to the pizza. So normally with a margarita you would do no sauce, do light olive oil on there, and then cheese, your tomatoes are actually going to be your sauce to go ahead and give that extra to it, and then your basil would just be that extra complement. But we can do it as well with, with sauce as well. So we're just going to grab some mozzarella. Same thing as the sauce, not too much. I know it's going to look like, well oh, it's not not gonna look like it's on there. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our tomatoes on. Fresh mozzarella, you can just go ahead and break these up into small pieces, just kind of spread them out along. Before we put everything, so make sure you put it on here to your transferring platter before you go ahead and throw it in. So that way you're not worried about everything getting on there. So this oven does come with its own little peel. I should have done it on here just to show you, but I want to show you guys how to do it on the bigger paddle as well. We're just going to go ahead and slide under here. Get rid of all this excess. So what we're trying to do is make sure that it has it's nice and smooth. Because if it's stuck over here, then when we go to throw it, that's when you're going to notice it like either all flips over or you're going to have a football shaped pizza. Again, if there's any excess like this, go ahead and take it off because that's what we don't want in the oven. So it shakes and moves. Nice smooth cut 
Because if you're trying to really press into it, you're going to bruise the basil and then you start getting those black pieces that just don't look as aesthetically oh. uh, nice. So we'll do this like a regular pizza. We'll just cut ahead and cut it. with like oils. Oh, yeah. You want to go ahead and add that little bit more of a rich